morning, everyone. It is Monday again, and um, happy day after Easter. Uh, how was your Easter, by the way? What did you guys do? We uh, we got up early and went to church, and that's the reason I am completely exhausted today. And when we got up early, went to church, um, we wanted to do the early, early service, then came home and spent the day as a family here. It was an absolutely beautiful day in Colorado yesterday. The sun was shining and it was warm, so we spent most of the day outside, had lunch outside, then went to the park and played some baseball and um, took the dog for a walk. It was just a really nice Easter Sunday, and uh, I hope you guys had a good Easter as well. I'm, I'm like deep in thought today about um, post-Easter. In other words, good morning, Audra, good morning, Brooke. Uh, we've had this build up for the last six weeks from Lent, which began on March 1st until yesterday, um, building up to this whole Easter story and uh, really trying to savor what it all meant, what it was all about. And then obviously yesterday, I hope you had a wonderful celebration at church with family, whatever you did to celebrate Easter. But the question now is, uh, and this is the one that keeps coming to mind for me this morning. If the, if the resurrection is really true and really happened, then how should we live now? And that sounds almost like an obvious question, but I'm not sure that our belief in Easter, the resurrection, always translates to the way that we live. So I've been spending a lot of time this morning and yesterday thinking, so if the resurrection is really true, and I believe it is, how, how should I, or how, if the truth of that, how would that translate into uh, thinking differently, uh, feeling differently, behaving differently, loving differently, good morning, Susan, uh, forgiving differently, if the resurrection is real, how, how do we live in that truth and that knowledge in the way that that belief is obvious? Uh, you know, there's this interesting uh, connection between our belief and our behavior. And if we really believe something is true, uh, if we really believe and are convicted 100,000% that something is real and true, it does change our behavior. Um, if we, you know, let's say if we really believe that um, exercising is good for our body, the more that we really believe that true, it translates itself into behavior that kind of matches that belief. Uh, if, if that is something that's so important, we could do this in all different ways. So my thought is, is how am I, is my life right now, good morning, Carolyn, is my life right now demonstrating my belief in what I just celebrated yesterday? Is my life uh, demonstrating this absolute confidence that I have a God who died but is now alive? For example... Uh, fear has always been something that has plagued me my whole life, something that I've always struggled with. I've told you guys this before. This is nothing new. Uh, and it's certainly gotten so much better in the last several years. However, if the resurrection is real, uh, of what can I be afraid? I mean, if the worst thing in the world is death and Jesus conquered it. Hey there, Lisa then what do I have to be afraid of anymore? Now I'm going to get more personal and step on toes. If the resurrection is real, if Jesus came, he died and uh, took my pain, took my sin, took my mistakes on himself, paid the price in full so that way I could have absolute access to God at any point in time, that the way would be made clear for me to have access to God, then if I really believe that's true, how should that translate in the way that I forgive other people? 
the way that I love other people, the way that I receive other people. So, uh, as you can imagine, that steps on my toes pretty squarely and convicts me pretty firmly. Um, I don't know that my behavior and the way that I love and forgive other people uh, really communicates my belief in the death and resurrection of Jesus. Do you see what I'm saying? This is so, this is so central. This, this whole resurrection message is so central to not just our celebration on Easter, but really should be the, uh, the cement underneath the way that you and I choose to live, the way we think, the way we feel, the way we behave, the way we speak, the way we love, and yes, the way that we forgive. This is huge. Uh, and then I started thinking this morning about the disciples. Uh, and, you know, hopefully you've done some reading in the New Testament. If not, I strongly encourage you to go to the four Gospels, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and then read the book of Acts and how the disciples were um, starkly different uh, post-resurrection versus how they were before. So you see the disciples following Jesus while he's alive. Then he dies and he comes back to life. And the disciples are unbelievably transformed. I mean, they aren't the same guys anymore. They're different. Uh, and this is what happens when belief takes hold and radicalizes you. I mean, just changes you. Uh, you know, I sit there and Peter is one of the best examples. He was so impulsive. Uh, so emotional. Uh, he was just all over the board in extremes. And then he sees Jesus risen and alive. And he becomes this man that has so much love for his brothers, so much compassion, and so much conviction and courage in the way that he lived. He knew what he believed. And so I just keep watching them throughout the New Testament and watching how different these disciples are as a result of, uh, of truly believing in the resurrection. They saw Jesus. They knew it was real. And so, okay, so what about us? Here we are 2,000 years later. Uh, what can we do to strengthen our belief? Uh, we, we weren't present at that time to see Jesus come back to life. And yet there are some things that we can do to deepen our belief. Obviously, uh, one of the first is to spend time reading the Bible, the historical accounts of Jesus' life, death, resurrection, and the disciples that followed and what they saw and experienced and read. I, the book of Luke, and I love the book of Luke because Luke was a physician, so he was very detailed, very fact-oriented, and he researched everything to make sure that what he was believing was based on truth and not falsehood. And so from the first word of the book of Luke to the end and the book of Acts, Luke is so careful about making sure that he has researched and um, verified his information. Um, there's other books that we have today that we can read. One that I read this week was called um, The Case for Easter, and it's by Lee Strobel. It's a tiny little book, uh, but it just really explored the historicity of uh, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. The Case for Christ is another great one. The movie is out. I think it's out now. Uh, so you can go watch that movie or read that book. Both of those books are by Lee Strobel. But there's multiple other books that really explore with the head the, the facts around the historicity of the gospel. So how can we really know that it's true? And, uh, and there's nothing wrong with using our brains and thinking and looking at the facts and the information to really build up our faith on the truth. There's a lot of junk out there. So, you know, research it, read it, study up on it and learn on it. Uh, another person that I love to read is Gary Habermas. He's probably the foremost expert on the historicity of the resurrection, uh, the death and the resurrection. R William Lane Craig is another one that I read. You can subscribe to his blog. He's very, very intelligent. In fact, it's like about every other word I'm not quite sure I understand, but I love the fact that he uses his brain to really think through what he believes. Uh, and so those are just some suggestions for building up our, our faith. But, you know, ultimately it comes down, read the Bible and pray. Uh, I'm finding that the more that I read the Bible, I'm no scholar, but the more that I read it 
and try to understand it and make sense of it and pray through it. God, help me to understand. I pray Psalm 119, 18 while I read. Um, open my eyes that I might see wonderful um, words in your law. Open my eyes that I might see wonderful truths in your law. Good morning, Bebet. Uh, and, and ask for God to give you that deepening belief. We want our belief to be so rooted and anchored that we live as resurrection people. That it's not just this nice story that we celebrate on Easter Sunday, but that the resurrection becomes something that sets us free and, uh, and gives us courage and changes the entire way that we live. Okay, so that first step is really to deepen belief. Do whatever it takes to deepen belief. Uh, study, use your head, think, pray, you know, build your faith on truth. And then second is, uh, and this is what I kind of talked about at the beginning, is to live that belief. This week, I want us to be thinking, how does the resurrection change what I'm going to choose to worry about this week? how I'm going to love and forgive the people in my life, including myself, and where I spend my time and my energy. How does the reality of the resurrection, how does the reality of the res resurrection, how can it change what I'm choosing to worry about this week, where I'm going to invest my anxiety? <laughs> And really, ultimately, if the resurrection is true, we have nothing to fear. But think through that. Is this thing that I'm worried about and I'm plagued about, what does, how does this hold up to the reality of the resurrection? Whatever it is that has me in knots and is keeping me awake at night, how does it hold up to the reality of the resurrection? And I would imagine that your fear and worry will diminish. And then uh, how can I love and forgive differently this week as a result of the resurrection? And that one right there, man, I'll just let it sit there and squash all of our toes for a minute because that one just kills me. I'm so reluctant at times to forgive and yet the extravagance of forgiveness in Jesus' death and resurrection just is incomparable. And then finally, how should the reality of the resurrection change where I spend my time, how I invest my time this week? Uh, and I don't have clear answers for that. <laughs> Those are big, big, big questions. So what I'm challenging you to do this week is not to pack up your Easter baskets and put them back in boxes in the basement, but to let the reality of the resurrection become something that speaks into the very life and breath of your life itself. That the reaction, the resurrection becomes, uh, it becomes the breath of your life and influences what we do. That really is the gospel. And you know, gospel means good news. That's the good news that we get to live with every day, that Jesus is alive. He's not dead. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys, today. I'm so tired. I think I have like an Easter hangover, which is, I guess, probably the best kind of hangover to have. Um, let me pray for us. God, uh, thank you. Just thank you for making a way for us. God, we are so lost without you. We are so lost without you. Help us to see you this week. Help us to see the reality of the resurrection this week. Help that truth to just take deeper hold of us, God, that we wouldn't pack up Easter and put it away, but it would be something that literally changes how we live, that we would be so transformed by our belief in your life, God, that we would be like the disciples, utterly transformed in your name. Have a great week, friends. You know I love you. See you next week.